Yeah. Great. Is this the unknown podcast? That's the huddle. Yeah. Far from reality. Oh. Far from reality. Sorry. Far. Yeah, far from reality. Yeah. Gunslinger. Well, Wisconsin. you know, you know, Dave will like that. Wisconsin boy over here. Can we do something that ties into the fact that we're in Seoul, we're in Korea, we're in Asia? Can we do like? But no puns on Seoul. Like Soul Brothers. Heart and Soul. Oh, I want that. I want it. I want it cheesy <laughs> like that. Um, so, what do you think, Bobby? Bobby, just name, name it, dude. Yeah. We'll get it over with. We're, we we obviously can't come up with anything good or meaningful. <laughs> I like the huddle, over? but it, like if it's taken, like maybe just call it something huddle. Huddle in Korean, Korean can, huddle. What can we change it up? Boil, boil, boil. What did you say? Huddle, huddle. Huddle. Trimble, trimble. No, you know what huddle's called in Korea? What is it? Chip hop. Ah, chip hop. Chip hop. Chip hop hooray. Oh, that's not bad. Chip hop hooray. Chip hop hooray. <laughs> it also brings in 90s hip hop, which I love. Can we go chip hop hooray until we come up with something better, please? I love that. Not the hooray, though. You don't like Naughty by Nature? Not because I hate you. Hooray. You hip hop hooray. <laughs> okay. Um, I, like, I like the huddle. I've always liked the huddle. Hustling huddle? Yeah, screw it. Huddle it is. Just call, just call it the huddle. Welcome to the huddle. Welcome to the huddle. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the huddle. All right, cool. Cool. Okay. We all love basketball. Mm. So I wanted to get together and just talk about things from the perspective of people who love basketball, whether you're a weekend warrior like Dave and I. And me. Hey, we're all weekend warriors now. So. We're all. That's true, but you guys are at least professionals, right? Used to we're used to, now. Used to now. You guys are gunslingers. By the way, did you see Eric's dunk? In the weekend? Bring it back. Yeah. Dude, Bring it back. Dude, I'm just wondering, yeah. I'm just wondering how long. So Eric's 42, 43 in Korean years, which is like dog years. How long are we going to be able to get these in your face slams? So you dumped on what? He, and he's in great shape, the guy you dumped yeah. on. He's that was 30, a nice move, man. What he's like 31, 32, well, something like that. He shouldn't be in he's, in, he's like in his physical prime. Dudes are like a bodybuilder. He's that. a super athlete. He's got the best name, probably body physically in that league. And you dunked on, you dumped on him in the last league. You dunked on this league. And this one was more juicy. But what I want to know is, it didn't look like he got hurt. Why did he sit on the ground for so long? Oh, God. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I was surprised because honestly, before the tournament, my, my body wasn't feeling great. I hadn't played in like six months. And I've been home training. Which hold on, hold on. Right. Before the tournament, Eric's just bitching to me. He's like, man, I just haven't been in the gym. I haven't been in the gym. Like, I'm <laughs> yeah. not going to like, I shouldn't even be out there playing. And then I'm like, oh shit. Like, what's Eric going to do? He's going to miss all his shots or whatever. And, um, which I did. <laughs> then he was like, did actually. Then he was like, and then I see you face. just slam on that dude. And it takes a lot for me to get up what, for whatever I'm doing and just start screaming and be fanatical. And, <laughs> and I think everybody in the cu- coffee shop like dropped their coffee because I just played with, and it's like completely silent, quiet as a church. Oh, it's, it's funny because you left a text message in our 40 year old basketball team chat room, right? Oh, my, my wrist hurts. Not in that? My wrist hurts so I can't play. Yeah. <laughs> and I had no idea. Because I came back from a meeting and there were like a hundred messages, so I didn't see what was written. <laughs> so I put up that post that shit was in our room. Much, huh? That shit was inspiring. <laughs> I like too how you guys have your secret 40 year old club and, and I'm, no, no, I'm you're, over you're 40 and invited. I, you haven't, in, yeah, you're you, invited you haven't put me in the group. Dave's not in there too, so okay. you both are going to be invited to that room. Absolutely. Okay. All right, Dave. Isn't that right. nice that they're invited Great. to the party? I wasn't paying attention. Okay. No, Dave, Dave, actually, right. Dave actually knows. We, we, went, oh, we, we went to the orchestra with our, the 40 year old uh, group captain. Uh, there you go. Ah, that doesn't make me feel better. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's go to our first topic. First topic, John, start us off. We just had an election. Mm, oh, God, but there you go. forget about politics. No, politics. Forget about politics. Okay. Uh, I, I did like what you were talking about. Should athletes get involved in politics? Mm. Or social issues? Or Let's start with politics, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, like, you know, athletes got a great venue. You know, they have a, a great platform to reach a lot of people. And... You know, good, bad, or indifferent. Like, I mean, why not? If you're, I mean, you have that platform. Like, why not use it for whatever you want? You know, if if you have a view and you feel strongly about something, then say it. It's your right. Why not? While you guys were playing, did you ever? Um... Oh fuck no! We kept our head down. Mid- <laughs> <laughs> we're we're from the '90s, bro. Yeah, bro. Did Michael Jordan? And not like we're comparing ourselves, but. But, you know, 90s people grew up in our era just kind of kept their heads down, I think. I mean, I think when we, when we were out there, it was like, look, I don't, don't want to do anything to, to, to mess up this check. Don't mess up this check. make sure these checks keep coming in. Now, are there players that do get involved in that? And has there I mean, been uh, negative repercussions? When we were playing or now? Now or now? Or now there are. For sure. Now there are. Yeah. Well, like, give me an example of what they're so doing. So there's a guy, well, 
So who opened it up was a guy who retired, Ha Seung Jin. I don't know if you know Ha Seung Jin. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a big, big, tall Korean guy. And uh, he came and once he retired, he wrote the, he did the whole YouTube thing and it blew the fuck up and went viral. And he was telling, this is why Korean basketball is... I love that video. You saw the video. I, I absolutely, Dave, did you see that video? No. Uh-uh. Top to bottom saying what was wrong with Korean basketball. And, and so he, he like won't even go to games. But then Lee Dae-sung, who's a current player, took that on and now he's been very vocal about like, let's change, let's, let's be modern. Like kind of thing. And how are people um, responding to that? People love it now, but we couldn't have said that back think, in our day. I think too, it's like what's going on behind the scenes for the owners. Mm-hmm. They probably don't like hearing it, but time, but Agreed. times are changing, so they can't be as vocal as they would have been. Like when we were when we were playing, if we would have said something like this, we might not have gotten a contract renewal. Like depending on how big you were. I mean, there's all kinds of stories of athletes like saying something. They they were at the top of their game, whatever, and then the coaches be like, yeah, you know what? You're just too vocal. We don't need this. If you're not gonna fall in line, then. But that's also the power of YouTube. So like, right. when when Hassan Jin came out, the KBL didn't like it. Two million views later, it's like you can't ignore that. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It, it's fun for people to discuss it. So now when players say it, they're like, well, I guess this is what people like. It's gonna bring people, people in the door. Like I think it was great because people were talking about it. Yeah. And like people like there was no one's talked about basketball. In Korea. Like you know, athletes, like there was so much that they just couldn't talk about because they're like, look, these guys are are paying my salaries. And I. I agreed with so much stuff that he was saying, although I, I didn't play. Mm-hmm. But there was so much that was just, it was like a critique on Korean society. Cultural shit. Yeah. Cultural stuff. It's not just right? basketball, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's like, it's, it's stuff that everyone knows, but There's they that, can't say. That hierarchical stuff, right? Mm-hmm. That, mm-hmm. Like, Ugh, I'm like, huh? Konde. You gotta fucking, yes. Konde Dave, Stop, do you know what a konde is? Yeah, that's like, uh, <laughs> it's not a kundu, me. I was trying to like, 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 you know. Yeah, the whole idea, right? Yeah, it's the old Irish yes, at the yes. top. That's just like the old Irish is bitter. Got some drink and like they're telling you about how awesome he is. Like, like, oh, in my right, day, Latte and Maria, right? Latte and all. Bobby, you got some condé. Oh, you, you, you do a good condé <laughs> impression. <laughs> You did. We, we spent 10 years under these Because moments. Eric's actually become a gongde. I don't know if you've... Uh, <laughs> Boravo. <laughs> Boravo. Chosek Mara. Chosek Mara. We didn't even answer the fucking question. Dave, what about you? What do you think? Uh, <clears throat> what, what do you, how do you feel about athletes getting involved in politics or... Politics? Kind of issues? Yeah. It depends on the person. You know, they, they all have things to say that they're, that are right. And I don't think they should be... Uh, held back because of mm. what their profession was. Mm. Or yeah, I agree with that. You shouldn't be held back because of your profession. Yeah, well, but why is, why is it like this then? On the same like vein, like why is it so controversial when athletes say something and then when actors or yeah, models like, say something exactly. that everyone's like, oh, got it. That makes sense. I think because they're always on camera. Because they're always on camera. So, so if there is something that you're really passionate about. That's kind of show-facing. Huh? If, if there is something that you're passionate about, you're, you have no problem like doing that or, you know, Talking about it, voicing your thoughts on Me whatever personally. platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I have something to talk about, I'll be confident with it. Oh, yeah. If I have bullshit to talk about, I won't be confident. I like when you bullshit them. Yeah. So I, I don't think, like, like the whole, like, should athletes do stuff? Because I, I don't know if they should or not should. Cause I think now it became kind of like a, like, you had to... To, to be political, like, especially in the bubble. Because you had to put you had to put something on the back of your jersey. I think it's like, if you want to, cool, why not? Athletes should have the freedom to do it, but I don't feel like you should be peer pressured into like, well, you know, a lot of people feel strongly about kneeling. Yeah, like bubble. kneeling for the anthem. Yeah. I think, I, I don't care if you kneel or don't kneel, but I don't think, it, you know, if everyone's kneeling, I don't think you should have to if like, you don't feel well, that way. The one guy from Miami, the one guy from Miami who I think is brother right. is a veteran. Yeah, yeah. And then they were like, oh, why aren't you kneeling? He's like, well, it's your personal choice. And then he decided that he wanted to stand to like honor a, a don't quote me, but I think something it was like Leonard, right? Myers Leonard. Leonard. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's fine. Like, like whatever you stand up for, like do it with confidence. You know. And there was a dude from Orlando. I think he was standing in, and he tore his ACL or something. Yeah, it was it was right. the, bla- it was the black it was black guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I just don't think that you should be like judged. Like, imagine how hard it was for that guy, especially being a white guy, to not kneel, right? And having to answer questions for that, doing that, something. That he, side eye that he for doing something he's done his whole life, like and. You know, I don't think, I wouldn't say you can't kneel, but I wouldn't say you have to kneel either. Like, I think it's just whoever, whatever people, you want to do. People hate shit too for not putting something on their back, like if you want to or not. It's like yeah. some, some people, like honestly, like some people probably just don't care about the issues yeah. that are out there and that's their right. Well, that's the problem with tradition, right? 
like we have a tradition and traditions glue people together mm -hmm. right but now you're just like one guy wants to like go rogue and break tradition mm -hmm. so you're breaking that unity it's supposed mm -hmm. to be a team sport right right you know what i'm saying so sure. so like yeah you know, it makes sense to me not to go rogue in that situation like mm -hmm. kaepernick and stuff like that but you know it's a different time people are different you got millennials xyz's nowadays mm -hmm. and it's uh, we're making a transition into what people think and do and it is probably it's probably hard like you know, is, that, is that the end of the team i know like because like in team sport is different like you have like however many guys on a football team soccer team mm -hmm. like a basketball team where however many guys are coming together and you have to be somewhat on the same page to accomplish your goal of winning right and if you have one guy that no one fucks with, or no one, or you don't have a like a different political view, and that becomes an issue. Are you talking about Dwight Howard? <laughs> <laughs> no, but like you know, I mean, like how? Because like if you're an individual sport, like say you're a hundred meter sprinter, uh -huh. your views aren't going to affect your team mm. because you run by yourself. Right. But like if you're the point guard on a team and you don't agree with what the center thinks, like you can pass him the ball because you don't agree with. Like I mean, that might be an issue. Mm. But like if you if you're like acting and this kind of stuff like does that kind of stuff like if you don't have the same views it's probably not going to affect your other co-stars right well they I say mean, that michael kane's not working anymore well he hadn't really worked in a long time is it michael kane or is it dean kadeem kane superman. Superman. Super superman. Right. Okay. superman is super yeah. right right I so can now see that. So he's talking and he's being really? verbal about the fact that i don't work in hollywood anymore because i'm because right peer pressure is a motherfucker i'll tell you that like and i think the funny thing is especially like when you talk about uh like that Look about John Wayne. And, and Bill Burr does a, does a whole bit about this whole thing. But it's like, John Wayne was born in like, what, 1905? Like, way the fuck back there. And he did one thing, he did one article in, 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 in Playboy magazine in like the 70s about like, you know, the civil rights movement. And he said something. And now they're trying to tear down everything he did, but it's like, are you surprised that a guy that it's like a dinosaur def, like defrosting a caveman and... You know, you're you're surprised that he murdered his brother for for you know a dinosaur bone or something. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you go back far enough, you're gonna get these weird ideas. I mean, it's hard to like look back and like judge these people from a different era based on our ideals. Like, if you looked at George Washington for his time, he was probably like acting how he acted, and like no yeah. one would have been like, I can't believe George Washington's doing this. But then in 2020, you're gonna look back and be like, obviously, like because we live in a different world. Yeah, I, right? I, I don't like cancel culture. Yeah. Like what culture? Cancel, cancel culture. Cancel like culture. how they canceled Dean Kane or, or right. anyone. Oh, cancel culture. I've never they go back. Before. So they go back, yeah. you know, they, they look up your Twitter feed from way back. And then if you've said something against, you know, right now it's uh, well, they can, can, can gays or recently. whatever. But even in Korea, they, they canceled Pak Jibun for a long time because of MySpace. Remember? Remember back in the day? A long time ago he said They went back and yeah. when he first came in and, and it was like the culture shock. He was like, oh, Korea sucks or something like that. And, and then they canceled him. that. And it's like, yeah, like it, for being like an 18 year old kid, are you surprised that he wrote some shit, you know, after going through all that, you know, but I well, with, with, with the cancel culture, you have, if, have you guys watched The Great Hack? No, no. Oh, I haven't. It's on, you know, it's on the flicks and you've seen it. No, I, haven't, no, I know what it is though. Man, it's pretty. Is it about that? Eye opening. Well, it's about uh, the, you know, 2012 Obama campaign, mm -hmm. and so, uh, mm -hmm. the, 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 basically about the Trump campaign and Brexit, and his company, uh, Cambridge, Cambridge, uh, Analytica? Analytica. I read a book about that. I read a book about that called Mindfuck. It's about the same thing. Yeah. yeah. It's just interesting. Bro. About social media and mm -hmm. how they manipulate it and mm -hmm. kind of like sort of. Dude, even, even right now, what, the what's social, it? Social the social dilemma. dilemma. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great one too. Have you seen that? I saw that. I've seen that one. Watch that. That one's really interesting. So I think that goes along with the cancel culture. Like, they're, you know, you're, you're, you're steering people in the right direction, hurting people. It's like you're hurting people. It's like you're hurting sheep. Bobby, yeah, I'm very silent, the, so <laughs> wonder, is, is Bobby one of the main advocates behind cancel culture? Oh, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I don't like it. No, but here, here's the thing. Like, when you, when you go out, it, the scary fucking thing is that Hitler was popular in the 40s in Germany. Hitler was fucking popular. The most popular person. Right, right. And we think, like, we have values and that we're, no, I'm rock solid. I'm not going to change. And then social media, this whole experience with algorithms and what you can see, how you can move people 1% off their beliefs. And if you keep doing it every year and you keep getting them to click on that shit, we think we're rock solid and our beliefs are our beliefs. But this shows you that the data says different. The data says that if they can get to you enough and get in front of your face, 
you will change your beliefs. You know, there's like, a, oh yeah. Go, go, go. Because of peer pressure and because you, you have A lot of that, ball. yes. There's yeah. a quote I read recently that I freaking love. Nobody or no one is as dumb as everyone. Right? It's about her mm, mentality. Mm, mm. That's like right? me, it's me, on me, NASA. Me and my brother were talking about this like just the other day and we we're looking at like what's going on in the States with the, the elections, right? And more disappointing than the fact that, you know, like Trump was like the president, that Biden won by a small like fraction of percent. We don't know yet. It's like, no, but I mean, right, right. <laughs> good point, good point. Excuse me. Like, Stop the unfortunate count. thing is, more than anything, is that like, how dumb is the fucking voting population? And then on top of that, only half of the people are voting still. So it's like, it's not like, these guys are out there, they're getting elected, right? And whatever their views are, the people at the bottom, like, they're not educated. Because they're voting for these guys. And then voters come out in a record, like a record amount. Like the most voters in the history of the United States, like elections that came out to vote this time around, right? And still what, 50% came out? And then still he won by narrow like margin. It's like, what's going on with the population? Where, what are they reading? Yeah, what, what, what are they consuming? I still believe everyone has their right to vote for whomever. No, I agree. I have a problem with actually Dave's friend, uh, what's his name, Man of Leisure. Yeah. He put a link to this dude who just kind of was venting, right? He's like, mm -hmm. I didn't vote for Trump, but what I, I, I'm getting kind of sick of people you put who... put that out as a disclaimer. No, no, but he wrote that. He wrote, I, I didn't vote for him, but I do get sick of people who... Like, because I have a friend like this, too. He mm. says, fuck anyone that voted for Trump. No, that's stupid. Mm. I think that's no, but just... That, but then he was talking about, it's people like that that makes it... You can't have a... There's so yeah, many yeah. nuance. It's a they nuance top. There's so many different things. It's not just about, oh... Like, oh, he, he separates, so my friend says, oh, he separated kids from their parents. Mm -hmm. no, but right? look, so let me ask you this. It's like, if you look at most other countries around the world, right, the, the election day is like, or the day, day to go to voting is like a holiday or people can't go and vote, right? And then people turn out. Like, there's a, like in Korea, like the voter turnout is, is a very high percentage of the population, right? Because people care what's going on. But in America, why, why does only half of the population turn out? Because if you, if you look at other countries around the world, I don't have all the data in front of me, but I would wager that a higher percentage of people vote hmm. than they do in America. Why is that? What is the voting system like here compared to America as far as... It's like, a pure popular vote here, right? Pure no, popular vote. about the act of, the physical act oh. of, of voting. Super it's easy, man. You go down, yeah. you, you fill out the thing and... It's it, a holiday, too. No yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the difference. So everybody thing. goes on the holiday. Yeah, no voter suppression, no bullshit. Yeah, it's a holiday. Everyone can go. And it's like, we have technology, so it's just you go down and it's like... It, you know, you don't have like a six hour line and, and the, the, the voting machine keeps breaking down and <laughs> you have to reboot it. Like, or hanging chads. Yeah. I, like, I, I, why I, are we doing paper I, things in a, in, when we, America spends more money on their elections, why are we still using paper and crayons? I just, I just wonder why in this time of day, like, it, the, these are important things and people in America, for whatever reason, half the population doesn't turn out to vote, whether it's not convenient or whatever it is i just don't understand why and this year was a big voter turnout year and still yeah. at 150 million or something right i think it's going to continue to grow now now that's in the spotlight yeah. it's going to voter turnout will turn up speaking of turning out <laughs> so, so so about our sports podcast <laughs> that's focused on sports actually yeah let's jump to you know what Let's jump to some war stories. Mm, I like time. war stories. War yeah, yeah, yeah. Stories. Just put the minute mark. How are we doing on time, John? <laughs> Our format's we'll pop. We'll figure it out. It's okay. Um, it's okay. We're still trying to figure out yeah, yeah. What, what this first is. Time. It's like, it's our first time. First time we're talking about it. Huddle it's, up. Like a, it's like a little baby that we're mm. shaping. So we'll, we'll I see. think it's like our first time and we just come into quick. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Let's just speak in, you know, speak into okay. speak <laughs> in the shape. Give us a second So wind. anyway, but yeah, <laughs> second wind. All right, so uh, <laughs> war stories. I, I did want to want to cover something. I do like that for a title, Second Wind. Second Wind? Is it's your old team. team right? I love Second Wind. Second Wind's good. Mm. Second Wind. Why? Second. Okay. Okay, what kind of war stories? Are we talking about pickups at bars, one-nighters? No, 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 no. Sports related. Because my wife's going to love stories. that. I remember, Man. like, in, in Seattle, like, one of the things I can remember is, like, growing up, you know, you're watching, like, the Fab Five, and everyone's just talking shit, right? And, like, this trash talk was, like, a big part of how basketball was when we grew up. It was huge. It was so, so cool. So you wanted to be in that, right? But, like, we are growing up, and, like, I could see what they were doing on TV. You, didn't, you couldn't hear what they were saying because they weren't mic'd up. But then we go to the park, and I'd want to talk shit, too. I'm like, yeah, I want to be like Jalen Rose. I want to be like Chris Rubber. I'm going to do this. I'm going to be like Gary Payton, right? And don't, then, call it, don't call it timeout, though. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Except for the timeout. So we go there. We go to the park and, like, talk shit, right? And I remember we went to the local playground to play some pickup. And there was like this like roid raging like like Vietnam vet that was there. 
and I'm talking shit to him. I'm like, you fucking suck. You can't fucking guard me. You're too old. What the fuck are you doing here? You know, you couldn't hold my fucking jock. Like, all, I just, everything I ever heard it, like, I was giving to him, right? Mm-hmm. And then he was like, all right, basketball's done. He's like, you just go outside. He's going to beat my ass. So I'm like fucking 16. Then it gets right? real. You know, it gets real. I'm like, oh, this, this guy... Like, I was just talking shit because I saw it on TV. Like, this guy actually now wants to oh, kill me. Yeah. So how did you de-escalate that? I fucking... Like, you know? <laughs> like, no, I, was, I was like... I was so scared I didn't know what to do. I was like frozen. Because I didn't think... I didn't... That whole thing didn't even like come into my mind. That this guy... Like, the other people had to hold him back. His friends held him back. Or I would have probably gotten killed. Mm-hmm. That's always, That was always <laughs> great when there was a fight about to break <laughs> right. out. And then everyone holds you back. And you're like, no, let me at him. Let me hold him. me back. Please hold, hold me hey, back. They, they, they weren't holding me back right They now. weren't holding me back. They were holding him back. Because yeah, he yeah. was fucking years. Like, I was like... I might have to run. <laughs> but were you standing there cocky like, come on, get me, old man. You're kinda, lucky those guys are there. Kind of. And then kind of like at the same time, like inching backwards. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> you know? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> that happened a lot when we were young. Yeah. What about you, Dan? Oh, to yeah, me? Yeah, during your playing days. All right, so I'm going to tell a story. Me and Eric, so we we went D1 and we played at this uh, small D1 in the same league as Gonzaga at University of Portland. And then... Eric transferred. I'm not going to talk about why you transferred. And uh, we went to this super Christian school, which was like, okay, we, we grew up in the church and whatnot. <laughs> we go to this super Christian school, and me and Eric are, we're the D1 transfers at a D2, which you're like, cool. Like, you're a cool guy. Mm-hmm. And everybody's kind of like, looks up to you. Me and Eric are playing one on one during one of the practice games. <laughs> and all of a sudden, Eric, we're just fouling each other. It, it's going back to like childhood flash flashbacks PTSD in the driveway <laughs> and we start going at it and then Eric rips my fucking jersey my practice jersey and back in those days it wasn't like you're sponsored and so it's hanging down like Captain <laughs> Caveman you know what I'm saying like one fucking thing and I am just fucking pissed but the coach is there we're at a Christian school we're swearing at each other which swear you can get kicked out of school this is how Christian it is you can get kicked out I Eric, got one of those when I Eric almost got kicked out of university for like drinking off campus. The second time. One was a death threat to somebody else. And one was swearing, ironically. I think one was maybe premarital sex. Whatever. You, you could almost get kicked out. But the basketball umbrella like saved us. Yeah. So I just hold this in. And we go down. And it was one of these old fucking shower rooms. And uh, you got to go and turn on and get the hot water. You got to turn it on and then go change. Yeah. And then it'll be hot by the time you get in the shower. And I'm just simmering this mother. Fucker, my brother, my best friend. Um, I grab his fucking shoes and throw them in the shower. His brand new <laughs> shoes. And this is college, bro, where $100 yeah, yeah. doesn't come oh, by. Yeah. And uh, and then uh, Eric goes, okay, cool. No, 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 this is what happened. Okay, sorry, I'm fucking it up. Eric takes my shower that I had warmed up, right? And then I throw Thank his you. fucking shoes in the shower, and Eric gets pissed. Eric is so fucking pissed, but he stole my shower. He knows it. He knows I'm pissed, and he's trying to aggravate me. And then I just fucking wait. And uh, I go and when I when Eric goes and he's changing his clothes in the sh- and he's in his locker. I come out dripping fucking wet on a fucking tile floor. Not a good idea. Um, I push his ass in the shower into his locker. I'm out of the shower, just dripping fucking wet. All these like super church boys, our teammates are around us, scared the shit of us. And I fucking swing, cold cock Eric, cold cock him. Punch him right in the the face. Yeah. Punch him. And it's like, when was the last time you got hit in the face? But I I hit Eric so hard in the face. And then I slip because I'm fucking soaking wet like a fucking dolphin. Mm. I slip, hit my head on the thing, and I'm wriggling on the floor. Eric's just got his foot because he's dry. And he's got his foot on my chest. And he's like, are you going to calm down? Are you going to calm down? And I'm like, get your fucking foot. And like, I'm ready to fucking tear into my brother. And all the guys that, that are, like, are late to Sunday school, they're just silent. They're not trying to break it up. Like they never see they're just getting up and slowly filing out of the locker room. Like, this is like, this is animal behavior. This is savage, too much, too much savage right, jungle right, behavior. School. And they're just walking out like, and, and I think it's because we were playing with a bunch of jailbirds down at our first uni- at D1 experience, you know? <laughs> Dude, man. Oh, yeah. boy. What, did, you, did you guys always so, so competitive growing up? We, we never really fought that much, like fist fights. I think that was one of our only... We've had a few, but that was like our, one of our only fist fights. But yeah, we would one like... On one, wait, not even when you were kids? You didn't really fight? We no, were like, like best friends. No, like we, Our mom like, beat us so much that we... Uh, you didn't <laughs> our have to our, our fist fight stories are all like something hilarious happens. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Every time we actually get in like an actual fight... Like it's hilarious like, when we end up laughing. He'll be on the floor like wiggling around or something like that. But like, but like angry. But I like, remember when Dave got in a fist fight. 
What fist fight? Wait, they tell us during our, our yeah. actor Thursday runs, but it wasn't really much of a fight. Oh, you and your buddy in Korea? <laughs> no, no, you know. One of my best friends, man. That guy. He's a, he's the type of guy, Jerry, if you're watching. Um, that sometimes you can get on your skin. I can get on his skin too. We were so close. It's because you guys have so much history. We have yeah. so much history. Yeah. You know, we used to live together. We were walking around the streets of New York together, like. Back in, I want to hear those New York war stories, by the way. But yeah, anyway, yeah. Yeah, they, was, they were pretty debaucherous. But uh, what was that? That was, uh, we were playing. You guys threw the ball at each other. Something happened where it was a foul, not foul. Yeah. And I think leading up to that point, we hadn't really talked to each other in a few weeks, a few months, whatever. Maybe we missed each other. I don't know what the deal yeah. was. But it was like, yeah, I was like, whatever, man. And so I turned my back and he throws the ball at the back of my head. Oh, that fucking... And that just set me off. Cheap shot. Mm. They, then, were, they were swinging on each other. You guys were yeah, swinging. Yeah, so that turned into... That escalated into mm. some... In that, into some that words. Some people separated. We're just watching. Us. But, you know, I, the funny thing is about that run, nobody knew we were that close. Oh, so Everyone thought you guys... Were, yeah, That's I true. I didn't know. at that point. I didn't know you guys were... You guys, you know, we were the, probably the two closest guys in that run, yeah. but nobody knew we were that close. And you guys are like brothers. Yeah, exactly. And that's why... That's why it happened. And it can happen so fast. So everyone's like, what the fuck's going on? And we're like, whatever. That's a lot of times with people that are that close, like brothers and stuff, it's like something, it might not even be that thing. It might be something that's kind of been building. It was that you know? thing that was building because yeah. you know, we just like, we started at that time maybe. He stole a girl or. Did, that's where. Did, did, what, never, women or he never, borrowed, borrowed some money or something. Or, money, women, nothing, or, just, you know. Just being a dick. There were plenty overall. of women to go around. So well, you know, we, it's, what it is is like you have friends, right? And then sometimes, I mean, you can't always hang out with each other. Mm -hmm. So you, one person starts hanging with some other people and you start hanging in another life mm -hmm. and you try to like create, you know, your own life for yourself. And then we don't really have that time to spend it with each other. Mm -hmm. And so it turns into like... Little abandonment, bro abandonment. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, I think, Jerry, was that what it was? I don't know. I think it was. <laughs> bro abandonment. Wait, but wait. Who was the... So he was the perpetrator in that situation. He threw the ball in the back of your head. <laughs> but yeah. Did or did you elbow him before or something? I don't know, but you were there. I was there. Yeah, I just remember ball see? being thrown and then suddenly like... Wait, wait, wait. wait. Hold, hold, hold on. So this fight breaks out. Yeah. And you just watched? So it was... You didn't, uh, you didn't was come a, in to like defend your boy? John was like the guy. was like, hey, I'm friends with Dave. I'm friends with Jerry. I don't it, know was to a, do. it was an LA actor's uh, basketball run on Thursday afternoons. Of course, actors don't have normal nine to five jobs, uh -huh. so it's like from one to four or something, mm -hmm. right? So it was on Thursday afternoon. And, and you that's, there, what, that's when I first met you. That's how yeah, I first met you. Uh -huh. He came so up to me. So you didn't even know him? Well, I, I didn't know him super well back the then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh, I got you. We were the only Korean guys in the run. So he came up to me one day after the run and said, "Are you Korean?" I'm like, "Yeah." I'm like, are you? He's like, "I'm Korean too." I'm like, "Oh well, shit!" And that's how mm -hmm. we that's how we first met. But anyway, so back to that fight. I just remember the ball being thrown, and then you motherfucker, and then just. Suddenly they were swinging, and then Jerry was like bobbing his head around like like a real boxer. Is that why you started taking boxing lessons? I needed to after that. <laughs> yeah. I feel like being an actor prepares you for that shit mm -hmm. because you're you know you always prepare for roles and you're taking like fighting classes. No, and dude, like, now you look at him when no, he was just saying in front of the mirror. And like stuff? Us, oh, it's like, good. Us, we never fucking took Taekwondo. We were just like we, fucking fighting, like like we got, flailing. We got in fights a lot, but it's not like we ever had proper training. So you we'd guys, go in just like you know. No. Just, what was it? Anthony May what was it? Larry Johnson and Alonzo uh, Mourning. Uh, like that was the worst fight. When was that? In the yeah, 90s yeah, where they were yeah, doing yeah. this? Because if, <laughs> honestly, if you're that big, if yeah. you're 6'10 rocked up, you probably haven't been in a lot of fights. Yeah. Alright, real quick, we'll start with uh, I didn't do my war story yet. So my story is real quick. It's no, it's not a big deal. Actually, when I said war How quick story, was it? I, it was very, very quick. <laughs> First time. <laughs> When when we're, when I was thinking war stories, yeah, I realized now that the name kind of implies mm. fighting or something. Mm. But it wasn't that. It was just you know, it was about different story time, like cool stories or different stories. But going along the theme of a little bit of fighting, I guess I'll talk about the first time I got in a basketball fight. Mm. Our it was a high school basketball fight. We were playing our rivals. Oh, like and, in a real game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not street. It turned into no, no, it turned. Yeah, it was a basketball okay. league game. Oh, these are awesome. games. Uh, in, in L.A. Okay. It was junior year in high school, mm. and. Um, it, it, it's always heated between we're North High, they're West High, mm. and then um, directions. Uh, during like I think it was like the fourth quarter or something. It was a tight game, and boom, there was a foul, and then they got in. You know, our player and their player got into each other's face. They started pushing each other, and all of a sudden, we just all just piled down. Mm -hmm. Everyone, I got a I, I 
punched one person and I kicked one person and I turned around and then everything was just kind of, but it was fun. I, oh, and, yeah. I and, and you know what? It brought our team together. Mm. Did, you, you, did you get hit? You were I did not get hit. Oh, those so are the best war stories. I, I, I punched and I kicked and I, I felt like someone was going to hit me from the back. So then I turned around, I did my little crab stance. Mm. And, do you think, um, do you think the other team would have been disappointed if you wouldn't have kicked someone, being an Asian player? Remember Pak Chano? Um, if I would have, yeah, yeah. The, he, <laughs> he did a, he did a that straight was dope. up Taekwondo side kick, right. man. Flying side I kick. I was so proud because I'd never seen a baseball fight where someone kicked. I actually got kicked in a game before. Have you? On purpose? Like, we were playing in Indonesia, right? <laughs> first, time I, first time we were Asia. playing, right? We went there, and I was playing for the team in Singapore. We were mm -hmm. playing in the Australian League at the time, so we did, like, some exhibitions running around. And we played in this mall uh, on, like, the second or third floor. And we played this Indonesian team that was supposed to be really good. We matched up, and, like, this guy came down the lane, right? And he jumped up to score a layup, but then he went into the jump kick motion. Mm. And I was confused, because I had never seen that before in a basketball game. Put his foot, his size seven, right, into my chest. <laughs> Dainty. Kicked me off to get the space and the score to layup. Size seven women's or men's? Probably men's. <laughs> what? <laughs> might, might have been a youth size. I was like, he, he fucking kicked me in the chest, That's got so the space, funny. then laid it up. Like that, like, and he did it so easily, it looked like that. That's his thing. <laughs> it's like Draymond Green kicking people in the nuts. You know, yeah. speaking of fighting, I think this is a perfect segue into your topic, kids. <laughs> mm. <laughs> speaking of kids. Oh, yeah. we're, we're going to my topic first? Yeah. Oh, yeah. God bless you. Okay, thanks. Mm. Um, okay, guys. Fighting and kids. Guys, 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 guys. So I just having my little guy and growing up, and obviously I want to be a basketball player, but I don't want to like be... Don't forget your girl, too. Uh, yeah, and my girl, yeah. Um, she can't walk you. But... You know, I don't want to be like that that uh, show parent where it's like you got to do this and put pressure. But what do you guys think is the best sport? Because uh, in Koreans, they think economics. Like, what's the I invest in this and what's the payoff? Like, what what are the possible ROI? Yeah, the ROI. So, Oof. or you know, like, what sport do you guys maybe wish you would have done as kids, or did you guys do the right sport, or hmm. what do you think would be the best? That is to interesting. Put it in? Dave, why don't you start off with that? Swimming. I should I should have been. I think I wasn't the most coordinated kid growing up it took me a little while to get a coordination and uh basketball was the worst player from fifth sixth seventh i mean i would get laughed off the court and i'd play and play and finally by ninth grade i was good enough to to make the team however i was a very good swimmer i didn't know really? that i didn't know that idea. yeah i'm and uh, you know for somebody with no training i was told i was pretty fast so. david mcspeedo All right. so but, you know i think swimming would have been a good uh avenue for me to explore sports wise because I think I would have had a better chance to excel in that sport mm. that's interesting anyway that's my two bits what about what about you Dan what's uh, what, what are you thinking what well I'm just like uh, basketball is such a hard one because there's so many yeah. factors that determine your success whether it's the coach it's a team sport mm -hmm. eh? so if people don't pass you the ball you can yeah. be a great shooter but you might not you know and you see this in NBA teams where a guy's on the bench and he goes to another team and becomes a star Whereas like an individual sports like tennis, there's really no one holding you back. Or like if you're a pitcher in baseball. So you would have picked tennis? I don't know. Like I, I'm just saying, I think baseball in Korea is a good one because it's a team sport, but it's individual. Hmm. So like if you're a good batter and you can hit the ball really well, no one can really stop you. Like the coaches can't like blackball you. Nothing can really stop isn't, you. Isn't one of the factors how much money they can make? And they can make a lot of money. Uh, yeah. Okay. What do you think, John? Well, I don't know about which sport is good, but I think nowadays there's so many tools to get them good because these kids get so many reps, right? Right. And then I look at Instagram, I follow a bunch of skills coaches, even receiver skills, and I, I just take down the link of any kind of good move that I can practice. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like kids have so much. So when yes. you watch kids, one of my buddies from UCLA, his kid is in all those skills labs and I see him doing all the things that I wish we could have done when we were young. And the kid's like eight or something. Well, that's the thing about, you know, these labs and these extracurricular activities. It gets them out of trouble, right? Mm -hmm. it, teaches yeah. them, it teaches them discipline. It gives them skills. Also, it gives them opportunity to get through college. College is how much these days. Right. That's, that's you know what I'm saying? So for, for my nieces, that's right. what it is. Like minimum. My, my nieces are pretty high-level high, uh, high level soccer players. And for, I always look at it. Forget about, like, pro or whatever level, right? Scholarship. You're gonna get. And that was free, my goal. You're gonna get a free education. Yeah. That's, that's what right. we looked at. Like you know, I mean, from the time I was little, I wanted to be a pro basketball player. But the first thing was like getting to college because our parents couldn't afford to send us to college. Right. So we're like, hey, look, at the very least, I don't have to pay back school loans. <laughs> Another yeah. thing for baseball, you go pro out of high school. Right. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but you guys got that. It was it was it was do or die really yeah. at yeah. that time because. Yeah. 
But right. you guys did fine yeah. making, you know, making that backdoor money right. in Korea yeah. right? with the cash. <laughs> and and as far as education, I would have been community college for sure. I you know, been. there was no college. Did you guys take your SAT? Yeah. yeah, we did, but we got into it. Well, for college entrance to yeah. Yeah. scholarship. Like, if I wouldn't have got a scholarship, I wouldn't have went to college. I didn't want to go to college yeah. even when I got, when I went. Yeah, there. Eric, Eric was definitely trade school material. <laughs> I feel like college isn't even necessary, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so moving Neither on up. All right. So let's, uh, you did you have the subjects you want to talk about? All right, so I just recently saw a documentary on Ronnie Coleman, right? Uh, yeah. Arguably. Are you talking about world famous bodybuilder Ronnie Coleman? Yes, I am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Ronnie the King Coleman. So there's a documentary on Netflix. Very interesting because when we were younger, um, one of my dad's best friends was a amateur bodybuilder. Yeah. Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob. May he rest in peace. Mm. You know, and he he his like idols were like Dorian Yates, like like you know Arnold Schwarzenegger, Lou Ferrigno, <laughs> like so all these guys. Like he had all the gold gym stuff at his house. So I remember seeing this stuff, you know, but not knowing very much about it. I just knew that Uncle was huge. I watched this documentary, and this guy, eight time Mr. Olympia, most legendary bodybuilder of all time, but now. Yeah, he's built his empire with supplements and all this kind of stuff. He's doing really well for himself financially. But he can't walk. He can't walk. Right? So it's like this, like the price of success. Right? Yeah. But why can't he walk? You get an accident or? No, it was like back surgeries and like yeah, just from lifting all the He put too much training. stress on his body. It's basically the, the, the way all the supplements had. he was taking for all those years. The supplements the, are fun. Oh, uh, yeah, the... Mm, the juice. You know, I've actually been on a couple uh, Mexico steroid runs. Mm. I've you've gone to Mexico. Wait, wait, wait. I've been steroids. on steroid runs. You took the steroids. I didn't take the steroids, but I, I know you took steroids in Mexico. Were, actually, I have tried a, a, a round of steroids. You got a shot in the ass. Twenty-three years ago, I tried a I tried a cycle of steroids. He did, but it wasn't steroids. <laughs> you have to. You have to where do you? No, I've done where, it. Where do you insert the steroids? I, I shot. I shot myself in the ass. You shot yourself. I've done it. I've done it before. Okay. I did one one cycle of it in ninety seven. How many How many times did you shoot yourself in the ass? Uh, for. It was like a two month period where did, what, did one, it do? once a week or once every two for weeks. For us non steroid users, yeah, yeah. what what is it like to be I've tried on steroids? Before. What's it like to juice? Well it it depends on the what what kind of steroid you what use. What was it like for you? What was your I personal experience that. with juicing? The first uh, the one I did was a piece of shit one where um, you retain a lot of water. So my face got all <laughs> just bloated. And so we took we took uh, like family pictures or something. My face. Is like, <laughs> oh my God. Serious? You have to break. You, do you still have that photo? Pop I, this I, I the yeah, we, we need to see that. Did you get Jack? Oh, did you get Jack? I got stronger. Harry and back. At the moment, no, no, no. And I didn't get acne. My balls didn't shrink. No. Um, I didn't get, Prove it. I didn't get tits. Prove so it. It's fine. But, but dude, the, the, the act. You got y'all watch the wrestler make you work. Right. 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 That's and, great. And the act that you just have to pull your. Shit oh, I did. I, and then so it's the yeah yeah. Shoot I, yourself up. You injected yourself. I injected myself. I, could, I I don't think I could have done that part because I, I just hate needles. I once the needle I fucking that. bent once. I was like oh, I got freaked out. Shit stuck right. in your ass. <laughs> Yeah, so I've, I've, done a, I've done a, a cycle, a cycle of uh, steroids before in my life. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I wasn't, it wasn't so but, good. Wait, you, hold on. Why yeah. did you take steroids? I, tr I tried. I you just tried. wanted, you wanted to be like a bodybuilder? Or? No, 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 no. I just you're tried. Just, yeah. But, but, but anyway. you were really into fitness. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. Your but I know I, I tried it 23 years ago, mm. but I have been on um, steroid runs with like a professional bodybuilder and stuff. To Mexico. Uh, yeah, to Mexico. So we'd go to a pharmacy and. No, because like, I mean, watching this documentary, like you just see like this guy, like, the price of success, mm. like for him to be legendary, to be in the Hall of Fame, like, like the price that he paid was being able to walk now. You know, so it's like, if you could accomplish your dream, and his dreams, like you know, were to be this. You know, he uh, he looks like he's completely happy with the sacrifice. But like, if you have some goal in life, like say, like you're a Kobe Bryant or a, or one of these guys that's ultra competitive, you achieve that. Like, what's the cost? And then. On the way, you achieve it, you're fine. But then after that, is it worth it? They say John Elway can't even like walk. Right. Yeah, like, right. you know, he's just taking so many hits. I think there's physical yeah. repercussions, but I think there's also relationship repercussions. Yeah. I think there's a whole bunch if you want to be the best. There's a so Kobe like, interview. Because like this guy, that. like like you watch the documentary, he seems like he's happy. He's got a great family yeah. life. Like, you know, he, him and his wife look like they have a great relationship. He's got like six kids, you know, and he's there and they're taking the kids to, to daycare and school and everything. And amazing, right? Michael Jordan looks like he has no friends. Yeah. 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 So like, yeah, it's so. like the, the other opposite. It's like Ronnie Coleman looks like everyone loves him. Great guy, right? Got a huge empire and everything, but Michael Jordan looks like he has no friends. Does he talk to his kids? I don't know. Maybe. But it doesn't, it, like, the feeling that you get from him is like, he sacrificed everything, and now he is where he is. Charles Barkley looks like he's got tons of friends. But it, the, the, there you go, it's it success like, to be right. the very best best. Right. I think you gotta like leave everybody with dust. 
But I would rather be like the Charles Barkley. Huh. And no, because you, you were telling me something about like uh, um, Elon Musk about what he said he gave his wife like thirteen minutes. He to, said like, <laughs> he said Elon Musk got it down to like a fucking algorithm where he's like a woman needs thirteen minutes of your time per week. And then when he ended up no. divorcing his wife who had like all of his kids and whatnot, he was like, I'll give you a day for, for you to plead your case and tell me why we should still be married. If not, we're going to divorce because I just can't, you know. I, I never knew this story. He needs to be more like focused on saving humanity, right? Yeah. So yeah, you look at that like, like success level, right? What he's accomplished and what he's been trying to accomplish. So he's willing to sacrifice his family life his, and everything else. Ryan Coleman sacrificed this. Michael Jordan sacrificed mm-hmm. this. Like what... What's the balance? Hmm. If you want to be uber successful, do you have to sacrifice everything else? So, Dave, what's yeah. your physical? Because you love sports, we all love mm-hmm. sports, we all play sports. I have tons of back problems, knee problems. What, like, physically? What have you sacrificed to to just play hoops and like do the things that you love to do, like sports wise? I think mm-hmm. my my ankles are pretty bad. Yeah, your ankles. How are fucked bad. are they? I, How I, fucked are they? I, I, when I go to the doctor Ligaments. and they take the ankle and like it just moves all around. It's just like nothing there. Does it hurt like on a day to day when you walk around? Well, it you know it's funny it, like it doesn't hurt as much as it used to. It used to be, I play ball and the next day I. But you don't play ball as much now the days. Yeah, right? it used to be like one game I, my ankles start hurting and like you know the next day, you know, yeah, I got something though. I got something. So what is the craziest thing? Mm. A coach, because we've all had coaches. Oh God. The craziest Here thing a coach has said to you, <laughs> Eric, okay, Eric wins okay, stuff. and then and then and relate that to, <laughs> you know, let's step out the box and th- think what that coach really meant at that time. This is the whiplash moment. Okay, Eric, you go last. You go last because Eric's I think this is going to be the best. Okay, great. <laughs> Dave, you go first. Oh, man. Okay, so I was. In 10th grade, and I'm, you know, at this time, 9th grade, I just finally, they stuck me on, you know, the B team, but two practices in, I got on the A team. So the next following year, I made, made, made a name for myself. I was kind of coming up. Mm-hmm. And the head coach, okay. Coach Melky, I remember that guy's name, he comes up to me after practice, and I thought something was going on. I probably wasn't playing defense. <laughs> he comes down, and he goes, he's pointing at my chest. And he's like, pointing at me. He's like, you think you... This is after practice. He's like, McGinnis, I got to talk to you. So I go downstairs into the locker room. So it's a one-on-one. It's a one-on-one. That's All not- the kids are gone. Mm. Okay? I go downstairs. This old, old gym. It's a good thing it was a Catholic priest. And, <laughs> yeah, right? And he comes in there, and he starts poking at me, and he says, he you, think, you think you'll ever be as good as me? At basketball? What? Yeah. He goes, do you think, but like this. Yeah, he was competitive with you. Yeah, he was like, do you think you would be ever as good as me? And I'm like, oh my gosh, never I'm like fucking 15. I'm like, well, I don't know. I mean, like, I didn't have that edge to be like, yeah, I'm better than you because that wasn't me. <laughs> why the fuck was he telling me thing. that? So what was the point of him saying exactly. that? Exactly. So you tell me why that coach, after the year before, he was praising me as being like somebody that's going to come up a bit. He tells me, "Will you think you'll ever be as good as me?" What does that mean? I think. Well, what did you? What led up secure? to that? What led up to that? Like, what was going on in practice? Yeah, where did you like? Did he tell you to do something? And you're like, "What do you know, coach?" Or like, what I happened? never talked back. If anything, I just didn't have any expression. But I never. Maybe I didn't do what he wanted me to do, but I tried. Maybe he thought you're like. Maybe he thought like your silence was like haughtiness or whatever. Okay, what is that? What does that mean? Maybe. So next topic. Next right, I, I, I like this though. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so for one minute, one <laughs> don't minute, our let's just go one minute. What do you guys think? Take his, his side. You all know my side. Take his side for one, for, we all got like 10, 15 I seconds. think, I think something you didn't even realize you did. Like you, he, he said, hey guys, you need to run a press and then you did it or something. Okay. And maybe you kind of, and then he has yeah. his own scars from his past. He thought it was the People didn't listen to him. I mean, let's say from his as a writer, my whole thought is people didn't listen to him, so that's his little insecurity, mm-hmm. and so you kind of tapped into his insecurity. Okay, and so he's like, yeah, and you're up. no, I agree, and and I, it's definitely his insecurity, but maybe he thought if you said you didn't, you didn't talk back to him, because I, I know that like I used to talk back a lot, and but if you didn't talk back to him, he probably thought you maybe had like a look in your eye, like mm. defiant look or something. Oh, maybe. I feel like he probably saw something either reminded of himself. Mm. Oh. And then he probably wanted to like, like look at you and like recognize something at that age that like he 
made some misstep that he didn't achieve his full potential? Wow, I feel healed right now. Just from all these answers right now, this. this has really, really bothered me all my life. Because, yeah, it really bothered me. And like, it's almost like I got molested by a guy that says, are you going to be better than me? Well, did, did he end up molesting you after that time? Oh, fuck okay, no. okay. But you know, it was, it's funny. It's funny. That's, I choose like a wrong. <laughs> a little harsh. We can edit that out. But you know, I feel very healed. I appreciate it. So basically, mm. there was some correlation between him and I. Maybe mm. I was like, Nunchi was not, not, not on point. Maybe I did something in practice I never thought about. Yeah. Great. Let's move on to somebody else. Dude, this is, I like this, this format. Because there's one I want to yeah. bring to you guys later. Oh. Not today. No, do it. Not do today. It. Not do today. It, not today. Do it now. Oh, no, no, now. No. now. Okay, next one. Next one. Next one. Let's take the coach's side. Mm. And let's really a- analyze that because I definitely feel healed right now because of this conversation. I, so let's just, just can John, we please? I feel like if I was a coach now, well, I, I think it's a different time than like, you know, in the 90s, right? But if I was a coach now, there's definitely things that I would do differently. Hmm. Like I would definitely tap a lot, not that kind of tap, but tap into the, the mental side, the, 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 the mental toughness in that side of things. Because that's what I don't think um, our coaches, like when I was growing up, none of my coaches kind of dealt with that. It was all the military format. Well, what, was, what, was the, that's just, what was the fuck thing? Like, I think like back then, like, you know, like the way people approach things was like, do as I say. I know it's better for <laughs> you. Eric, right, right. tell your story. Tell your story. Yeah. This is some fucked up. And which, this is happening in Korea. Which one? <laughs> which one? <laughs> which one? I mean, like, there's, is there, there's not one that sticks out? The one, the one where he's slapping practice, that one? Yes. Wow. I think that's like some Korean bullshit that yeah. Americans would never even, this is not even it's a like thing the, anymore. The first story I was going to tell was like like a story that I had like when, when I was playing in like a, a minor league, you know, trying to figure out how to go pro, right? We're in the locker room and the coach puts up on the board. This is in America? This is America, right? America. So I'm playing for the yeah. ABA, right? Okay. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. They, they were trying to re- resurrect the thing. And this coach, like we're getting ready to go a game and he just wrote up on the board pussy, right? Mm. And everyone's like, what? He's like, y'all know what we're playing for. He's like, if you guys don't go out there and fucking play good, you guys think you're going to get any fucking pussy tonight? Oh, that's a motivational speech, bro. <laughs> we're sitting out there all of us like, I'm you know, trying to get a job overseas. You know, we, don't, we weren't even getting paid. Our owner wasn't paying us. And he writes pussy on the board, right? Mm. And we're like, okay, coach. Because our coach wasn't like an attractive guy. He obviously yeah. Randy? Lot. Is that Randy? This was uh, the guy from Belling. Uh, oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Turner. Yeah. I was going to tell that because everyone was just confused. We're like, you're trying to motivate us, and everyone's like, pussy. Like, uh, what are we doing in the two-man game? <laughs> like, yeah. what are we doing in the pick and roll? Like, we didn't know. It was kind of confusing. But when I came to Korea later, it's my first year here, and I'm excited to finally get to join my brother, play in Korea, and all this kind of stuff, right? And uh, getting to practice, and yeah, I can't speak Korean, so I don't know what the fuck is going on. The translator translating half, because, you know, it's a difficult job to be a translator, because you, you, you can't translate everything, you know, as I learned out la- as I found yeah. out later. And then... Uh, <laughs> We're sitting in practice and like I'm trying to learn the defensive rules and everything because I'm playing as local and not as an import anymore. And uh, you know, and I've been an import my whole life, so like the way I looked at basketball was just different. Come over here, I'm learning a lot of shit, this is fucking hard. I'm talking to my brother every day, I'm like, yo, what the fuck is going on? He's like, yo, you just got you know, there's some shit that you just gotta understand and learn. And he helped me out like a lot, especially like those first couple of years, because this shit was just so different than any place I ever played. And then we're in practice one day and like I make a defensive mistake and the coach is screaming at me, I don't understand what the hell he's saying. And he comes up and just fucking sp- Smacks me in the face. What? In practice. Sadie. Right? Like slap. Like or slap punch. Me. Slap. Like, like, Sadie. like yeah. slap me. He's an older guy. You know, he's probably like you know, 60 years old at the time. And Disclaimer, I, this is normal behavior. Yeah. In and by the way, wait, wait, were you yeah. Eric Sandrin at that time? Or were you Eastern Jun at that time? So I had just given up my just became, I just became a Korean <laughs> citizen, right? So you weren't a... You weren't a, a I was no, longer, I was no yeah. longer a U.S. citizen. Okay. Mm. And so like, I remember I was still learning my Korean name. Right? Yeah. Like people call him a Korean name. I was like, oh, this guy yelling at man. Oh, he's mad. And then like this all happens in practice. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, like going crazy. Practice stops. You can hear a pin drop. Because like, you know, I'm like, I, like at that time I was still pretty big, you know. Like, and I'm definitely taller than this guy. And this old man just came up and smacked me in practice. Gargamel. Right. And I look at him and like, my I, I, like I'm like, like thinking I'm like, dude, should I fucking rip this guy's head off? Like I'm I'm gonna go to jail because the the. Like, the, the story isn't going to be, like, this guy hit me. It's going to be that I destroyed an yeah. old man. That's some crazy American, you yeah. know, like, when... The two imports in practice were like, E, chill out, chill out, E. Like, they're trying to calm me down because they can see, like, no, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was an emotional player, but, like, I wasn't going to go fight my coach, right? Yeah. But I've never been hit before, you know, by the coach, right? Jesus. So I look at him, and I'm fucking going crazy. I'm, like, in my mind trying to figure out what to do. And I just, like, looked at him. He took a step back because he 
he was like, oh shit. He probably realized. Did, did, did he I he probably never bad? seen a Korean you know, react that way. You know, because like, you know, a Korean probably would get hit and like, put his head They'll put their head down. Yeah, just on the. I looked at him right in his fucking eye and I was like, fucking crazy. And then I walked out of practice. Good. You know, walked out of practice, called my brother, and I was like, "Do you know, go fucking believe what happened in practice day?" He said, like, "What wow. happened?" And like, there's no way that you were prepared for that phone call. I was not prepared. <laughs> I believe I've because I've seen that yeah, behavior. I've seen worse than that. I've right. seen people get hit with hockey sticks out here. Yeah. Why but did you do that? I didn't think it would get hurt like to you. Yeah. Well, what, what was he trying to prove? Dave, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? It's a mystery. Well, okay, so he came up and smacked you because the defensive. Again, I also made a defensive mistake. You and me the same. <laughs> you know, lesson play, play defense. But real quick, you were talking. We were talking about like you know the old man who grew up in that kind of an era, right? Yeah. In the eighties and before, even early nineties and stuff. At school, it's teachers normal. used to teachers normal. used to hit, yeah. the, hit yeah. the students. Yeah, the stuff still so goes on. Career. Teachers uh, used to hit their students. It's like asserting your dominance yeah. over the situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know enough about Korean culture to know that. You know, if that's sort of the thing that they do, and if you were you still Eric Sandrin, you wouldn't have gotten hit. Probably not. Probably not. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's why I asked you. Yeah, were, was, you was, were you? Was, were you an import? I was fully or were you a Korean, Korean by then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I, I was. I, I didn't know what to do because, like, I've been, I've been in heated situations, like you know, where you get in, like you know, chest to chest conversation with your coach, but like you know, the coach is no. I mean, our coach in college, like, he got in a fight with one of the players and he like got one of his eardrums like knocked out. Because yeah. like in the states, like you you'll fight. Yeah, in America, if a coach hits you, then you're gonna you better that. be prepared yeah. to get knocked out. Because yeah. like like in the states or anywhere else in the world, if that happens, you know you're mm. you're gonna throw it down. <laughs> okay, uh, what happened to your relationship at the end of that? So like I went and talked to the GM, and I was like, I mean, like know, six months later. Six months later, yeah, it was fine. It was Did fine. you see that asshole around? Yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, the the thing is like, I didn't understand a lot at that time. Yeah. Right? But then as time went on, I'm like, all right, like, you know, like, this is this is the, the environment he grew up in, right? Yeah, yeah. And, like, it's an environment that I knew nothing about. So I was shocked as fuck. And I'm sure he saw that shock on my face when I was like, I'm about to rip your head off, you know? But, like, it's an interesting thing, like, where that I've learned, like, it seems like things happen. And then Korean people have a beautiful way of being able to just move on and, and be and friends like, like and, nothing and happened. Be friends like, yeah. like, hey, remember that shit that happened? Now we're now we're like close. Except the dude talks about it on a podcast yeah. years yeah. later. No, I mean like I mean I see him like there's there's I mean it's not like I hate the dude, he doesn't yeah. hate me. And like honestly when he when he smacked me, there was no like he was just like really probably frustrated with my lack of defense, mm-hmm. which coaches have been frustrated yeah. with that for years. Yeah. You know, but and, like that's the way he expressed it and like so I'm I'm not like man this motherfucker do this, blah blah blah. Wow. I was, You're at quite that, a at that time. Yeah, mm. So was, he was trying to motivate you, maybe, yeah, in I'm his sure, mind. I'm sure he was like, man, I don't know how to get this guy to play defense. Maybe this will work. <laughs> it did. On, on that did. note, let's motivate each other by slapping each other. <laughs> okay. Right. Dave. Okay. <laughs> Dang. Oh, man. Call it. Well, if you, uh, if you all want to uh, hear, hear more stuff, like more different subjects you want us to talk about, let, us, let know us know in the comment section below. And subscribe here. Well, how do we do it? Ring smash the bell. That, smash uh, that like button. Is it the like button. That's so cheesy. Oh, I hate yeah, that. Spotify. Oh, smash that like button. You can comment below. But don't scratch that. <laughs> Lick button. the like button. Lick well, it. Seriously, smash it. <laughs> yeah. Smashing is fun. Yeah. <laughs> just touch it. Give it a pound. Give it a pound. Give it just a tip. tip. Yeah. Romantic. Just, just give it some love, man. Just the tip. Tip, tip drill. On. Okay. Just a tip. Okay, guys. Oh, we went down, okay, down, downstairs just real just quick. Just adult content only. All right. Penthouse, baby. This is the huddle. What was it again? Ah, oh, second wind. Mm. With Dave, Eric, and Dan, man. and John featuring the talented Bobby. Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. Yeah. Bobby can you bring your guitar next time? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Please. Yeah. Okay. Tail slate? Go. Slate it. <laughs>